Good evening, everyone. I'm Dareth Voorhees, president of the President's Council of Woodbridge Township, and I'd like to welcome you to our annual candidates night. Before we, be before we begin, will everyone please rise and join me for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our moderator for this evening is Mr. Glenn Lottman, who is principal of Woodbridge High School. We welcome him and thank him for moderating this evening. President's Council would also like to thank Avenel Middle School Principal Mr. Joseph Short for allowing us to hold candidate, Candidates Night here this evening. Candidates Night is a forum, not a debate. We offer this night to allow you, the citizens of Woodbridge Township, the opportunity to hear the candidates' platforms and to hear the answers to their questions regarding our school district. This will enable you to make an informed decision when you vote on Tuesday, November 6th. President's Council does not endorse any candidates. This year, there are four candidates running for three seats on the Board of Education. Each candidate will have two minutes to state his or her platform. The remainder of the evening will consist of additional questions that were prepared by the President's Council and questions from you, the audience. If you would like to ask a question, please write your question on an index card on the table right over here. And, um, give it to one of the members at the table to the right. All questions will be screened prior to be given to our moderator to assure that they are pertinent to a board candidate. The night will end at approximately 8 p.m. Therefore, due to time constraints, not all relevant questions may be answer selected. Response to all questions will be one and a half minutes or less. The night will end with a two-minute closing by each of our candidates. This forum is being recorded by TV 3536 to be televised at a later date prior to election day. Please turn off any cell phones or electronic devices, and I will now turn over the program to our moderator, Mr. Glenn Lottman. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, candidates. I'd like to thank each and every single one of you uh, for coming tonight and for uh, choosing to run for the Board of Education. Uh, the town and our students definitely appreciate all you do. Um, as um, was stated before, tonight's um, uh, event will take place with each candidate will be able to present an opening statement, which will be two minutes long. Then each candidate will have an opportunity to answer several questions. They'll have a minute and a half to answer each question. And we'll end the evening with each candidate providing a closing statement, which will also be uh, two minutes long. So I would like to start right away with Mr. Maris. Would you please give your opening statement? Yes. Good evening and thank you. I appreciate your continued service to the community and I certainly want to thank um, the President's Council for sponsoring this forum. It is a, I think, key element in helping the voters within Woodbridge Township decide who they want to represent them on the board. And uh, I commend you not only for this activity, but all you do all year long for the kids in this school. Thank you. As to who I am, I'm Tom Maris. Uh, my parents moved my family here back in the early 1950s, and I got my primary education in this school district. I had started an appropriate school in Newark, but I started back here in fourth grade, and because the school system at Newark at that time was less than right here in Woodbridge, I had to repeat the grade, as did my younger brother. That taught me a lot. So did the Woodbridge school system. It taught me the very fundamentals that I needed to be able to go ahead with my career. And I went from a blue collar worker all the way up to a corporate vice president with major corporations. I traveled internationally. I've lived in Japan, the Middle East, Far East, uh, on executive level. Uh, I continue to be very active even though I am retired with groups and have been on the boards of several different organizations, New Jersey Taxpayers Association, the New Jersey Oh, uh, pardon me, open government, um, also very active here in the community, both with the political situation down at Town Hall, and certainly a number of times that I've been here over the years um, to hear and discuss things that are going on with our school system. I have a great deal of concerns about what's happening in our school systems. I don't like what I see. I don't like the curve that it's been taking. I don't like the fact that taxes are going up 
and the schools are failing. They're failing miserably as far as health, environment, education. And anybody wants to refute that, just please read the paper. Watch what's going on. Look what's going on in School 18. There was no reason that school should have been that way. How do we have the right personnel? And for a couple of years, there was a man sitting in that position that had no qualifications to be there, nor did he ever attend them until they finally removed him from that office. Today, I know for a fact, because I even published it, that the gentleman that is handling superintendent of school, I mean, sorry, supervisor of grounds, and buildings is well qualified. He has the certifications that are needed. And we need to clean up these schools in many, many ways. Drugs, mold, mildew, asbestos. We have millions of dollars to be spent. And we are woefully short on schools right now. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Mr. Maris. Mr. Harris, if you please provide your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Lapman. Uh, foremost, I'd like to thank the President's Council for continuing this tradition of giving the public the opportunity to meet their school board members uh, and those running. I apologize. Uh, so I thank those beside me for willing to join us. Uh, the responsibility for overseeing the eighth largest school district with over 13,000 students, 1,900 employees, and a budget over $230 million is one of responsibility that I and my fellow board members take very seriously. Our district has taken great strides since I've joined the board six years ago. We have revised and added dozens of new curricula. We have even begun to digitize it to save money on costly textbooks. We have added thousands of computer devices, going as far as providing a, de a device to each of our students grades 8 through 12. We have established partnerships with seven colleges, which allow our students to earn college credits while in high school. In partnership with Mayor McCormick and, and our municipal partners, we have added a school, begun replacing a school, and significantly renovating the oldest school. With the financial support of the township, we've completed over $26 million in community use projects, including upgrading our art and athletic facilities. We grew special education programs such as RISE. We've added SOAR, and we've also created an alternative high school called Twilight to improve services and keep our students in district. Even with the aforementioned investments, we have maintained fiscal discipline, keeping within the annual property tax cap. Despite the steps in the right direction, we could always improve. Our buildings are old and need constant upgrades. Too many of our school rankings turn away new families and suggest to current families that the grass is greener elsewhere. Finally, sometimes our level of customer service falls short of our collective expectations. Despite six exhaust exhaustive years, I remain hungry to serve this community. I still enjoy pushing my colleagues on the board as well as the administration to be better. When I first ran, I told everybody my reason for running for the school board was to make sure that we get our children's education right every day because they simply have no second chance. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Mr. Harris. And of course, the two candidates with rhyming last names have me sitting next to each other. That's going to be fun tonight. Uh, Mr. Tamborello, would you please provide your opening statement? Thank you, and thank you, President's Council, for continuing to hold this event, and thank you for all that you do throughout the year for our schools. It is important work. As always, thank you, Mr. Lotman, for moderating tonight. Uh, you continue, I'm sure, to handle this assignment in a fair, balanced, and professional manner. My name is Ezio Tamborello, and I am seeking my fourth term on the Woodbridge Township Board of Education, having served proudly two years as its board president. I've been married to my wife, Jenny, for 24 years. We have three great children, one in grad school, one in college, and one right here in high school, all products of this school district. I am a homeowner and a taxpayer, former youth sports coach, former small business owner. In my professional life, I am a senior project manager for the, one of the largest energy infrastructure companies in North America. I coordinate multi-million dollar projects on a daily basis and I love seeing those projects through from inception to completion. It's what I do every day of my life. I was first elected to the board in April of 2009, and I've been humbled by the continued support I've received from this community throughout the years. It validates that we've all been part of some pretty special things for our students, families, and staff. I bring up those past nine years because experience counts and leadership matters in all walks of life, especially public service. Myself and my colleagues on the board work countless hours, 52 weeks a year, to help move this district forward, and it, has been my, and it is my sincere hope that the voters continue to support our vision for the district. It is that vision that has helped us offer almost $1.2 million in tax relief for this community, 
It is that vision that allowed us to implement full-day kindergarten this past fall. It is that vision that guided us to offer every 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grader his or, her, his or her, her own iPad or Chromebook over the past several years. It is that vision that demanded that we are a leader in safety and security, and it is that vision that helped us secure several successful bond referendums. Now, with great successes come great expectations. Dan, Sue, and I will meet those expectations, and we will continue to work for you to ensure that we, go not, that we do not go backwards as a school district. We thank you all for your support, and we continue and will continue to earn your vote on November 6th. I ask you to vote 1K, 2K, 3K for Woodbridge Township Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bourdain, if you would please provide your opening statement. Good evening. Uh, I want to thank the President's Council for hosting this event tonight and Mr. Lotman for being here. Um, I want to thank my running mates for their support. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight. My name is Sue Bourdain. I am an 11-year resident of Woodbridge Township. I have a daughter who will be 11 in two days. She's a big fifth grader at Port Reading School and, I could, and she couldn't be more thrilled that her mommy is on the Board of Education. She's excited about me continuing my journey to help shape the future of our school district. Tonight I'd like to share a little about me and why I'm here. I've been a parent leader for the past seven years. I'm a PACE parent and board member. I work closely with the organization POAC to bring our district valuable free training in the special education area. My daughter qualified for PACE, our extended school year, meant to help retain the skills she learned through the year. From the beginning, I found myself attending every parent support meeting and really learned a lot about what our district has to offer. I uncovered my own desire to help other families as I had been helped. It is an amazing feeling to be able to give back to the parents and the community, which has been so helpful. Special education in Woodbridge Township is outstanding, but that doesn't mean we can remain status quo. My goal is to make my experience fighting for my daughter and fight for all of the students. It is through communication that we will discover a strong bond between parents and administration. But I'm more than just special ed. I was in IT for 11 years before having my daughter. I love technology. I'm impressed with the pro progress our district has made with the one-to-one -one initiative. Having our own high-speed fiber optic network available in, di in district opens a door to new innovative learning. I was just shown a sample of the new fifth grade science curriculum and was very impressed. My daughter said, isn't that song stuck in your head now? And it was, but more importantly, it was stuck in her head. New, innovative, creative technology-based learning. I want to be a part of that. Thank you for the opportunity this evening. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, at this point in the evening, we are going to ask each candidate uh, questions that have been prepared by the President's Council. They will each have one and a half minutes to answer each question, and the way it will work, each candidate will have their opportunity to answer the same question. Uh, Mr. Maris will have the opportunity to answer the first question first, all the way down to Ms. Bourdain going last. Then the second question, Mr. Harris will go first, all the way down with Mr. Maris uh, answering it last. So each uh, candidate will be able to answer a question first, second, third, and fourth. So first question, and again, Mr. Maris, if you would please answer first says, what qualifications and strengths do you have that make you a good Board of Education candidate? Thank you for the question. Um, years of experience. As I said, I, I'm somebody that, kind of unique. Um, I went to school in Woodbridge Township. Uh, I left school early. I went and joined the Marine Corps, came back and got my GED. Trust me, I know the value of an education, and I worked very hard to continue that education in pursuits of uh, undergraduate with business administration and got my own real estate license. I don't practice real estate at this point in my life. Uh, I've watched the board again. I, I've watched what's going on in the school system and I, I feel that it does legitimately need, and I'm not casting dispersions on anybody else, somebody outside the clique that has dominated this board of education for far too many years. You need an outsider in there. You need somebody with a fresh mind, my type of international experience that I can bring. I've run multi-billion dollar projects around the world. I can bring a lot and I know how to work with teams and I will work with a team. I may oppose certain political ideologies. That does not mean I will not put the betterment of this school, the, our teachers and our children first. I absolutely will and I can do that. I've got a proven track record that I love my community and I love volunteering in other areas that help further education and the betterment of the community. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris, same question. What qualifications and strengths do you have that make you a good Board of Education candidate? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lottman. Uh, I've been on the school board for six years. I'd like to think uh, you spend about the first year just simply learning how uh, it all operates. Uh, I know I, I kept quiet for the first year, uh, studying and learning, uh, going to career development courses that the School Boards Association provides us. In fact, we, they, are, they consider us the best trained school board members in the country. Uh, spend four years just, uh, just boning up on school law, uh, finance and governance and so on and so forth. Uh, so in my six years, I've, I've done the professional development that is required of us. Uh, I've learned how our district operates. I think my experience now helps guide me in the annual budget process. Uh, additionally, I, my day job, I work for the state government. I work for Speaker Craig Coughlin. I am his legislative director. Uh, for the past uh, 10 months now, uh, and prior to that, eight years working as his legislative director, I've worked on uh, state law concerning education, in particular rewriting the school funding uh, formula that we did this past June. Also, the new bond question that is up this November, uh, I helped write that. Uh, additionally, uh, we, we work on several other pieces of legislation because, frankly, the Department of Education holds considerable sway, as my colleagues in the audience and my colleagues up here on the board will tell you. The Department of Education holds consider considerable sway. I, in my day job, get to influence the Department of Education and work with them. Uh, and through that experience, I think that makes me a better board member. So that is my uh, experience and qualifications. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tamborello, what qualifications and strengths do you have that make you a good Board of Education candidate? Thank you, Mr. Lotman. I, well, I said a lot of it in my opening statements about uh, what I do in my personal life and my professional career. I am a project manager, and I know how to get things done, quite frankly. I've uh, been active in, in local education for over 20 years, and I think a lifetime of experience uh, has, made me, has, has made me prepared for this role as a school board member. Obviously, the professional development we also get as, as school board members uh, through New Jersey School Boards has been a, a tremendous help to me in, uh, in making me learn more about the, the nuts and bolts of, of how to be a good school board member. And again, it's not just a personal experience, it's also personal relationships. Personal relationships with uh, administrators, teachers, staffs, families um, that I've built um, over the past uh, 25 years or so uh, has made a given me a tremendous impact and given me uh, a greater perspective on what works in this district and what needs to be worked on. I think I know that well. I think I've uh, produced uh, results for this district, and it's all because of my personal professional experience and the relationships that I've built over the past 25 years. I look forward to continuing to do that. Thank you, Mr. Lotman. Thank you, sir. And Ms. Bourdain, if you'd please finish up this question. What qualifications and strengths do you have that make you a good Board of Education candidate? Um, thank you, Mr. Lotman. Um, I would say, you know, I, I graduated from a top-ranked high school in, in New Jersey. I graduated with a degree in communication um, where I used that to uh, work for 11 years in IT. Um, I have fought for my daughter for the past seven years to get the services that she's needed, and I feel that makes me a good advocate for the students um, in special education and all the students that need a little bit more help, a little bit more uh, fight behind them. Um, I've been a parent leader in our community, um, not just through the schools, but in buddy ball and um, other, other areas. I've sat round tables with other districts and learned uh, what strengths they have and tried to take them back to our district. Uh, I've spent mostly every summer since my daughter's been in PACE, at PACE, trying to get to know the students and the faculty there, and I feel I have a very good relationship with them, uh, getting to know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and throughout the district, these teachers come from every school that we have and teach uh, a month of PACE in the summer. And then they go off and they do their things in their school, and I think it's a, a great collaboration that they have in, at PACE. Uh, just being there has definitely made me aware of where my strengths are. Thank you. Thank you very much. And moving on to the second question, Mr. Harris, if you would please go first. Sure. It reads, what is a priority issue that you would like to see given immediate attention and why? Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lottman. 
Uh, primary issue would be the age of our schools uh, combined with uh, the new additional money that we'll be receiving from the School Funding uh, Reform Act that was uh, tweaked again this uh, June. Our oldest school was built in 1911. We are renovating it. Uh, our second oldest school was built in the early 1920s. That's School 11. Uh, right now, that is uh, being completely uh, replaced. Uh, school 4 and 5, School 14, and uh, School 18, uh, which issues uh, propped up this past year, they are they remain our other oldest schools. Uh, this past uh, June, excuse me, July, the district, uh, we've received three and a half million dollars in additional state aid, extraordinary aid. Next year and for the next six years, we'll be receiving additional money. Weber Township School District has been one of the most underfunded school districts in the state, the 20th as a percentage and number one in sheer dollars. That has changed with the uh, passage and the signature of S2. Uh, so we are in for new additional money, which uh, we should all be very happy about, but we have to be strategic about it. Uh, again, uh, given all of our investments that I talked about inside of the classroom, with this new additional money, we have to put it towards our facilities to make sure that they are top-notched and ready for the 21st century student. So that is, uh, that is where, my, uh, that's where we need to focus. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tamborello. What is a priority issue that you would like to see given immediate attention and why? Thank you, Mr. Lopman. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, what most of our time is taken up with in meetings, and it's many, many meetings, it is the condition of our schools. We have some of the best fields and facilities in the state, no question. You could ask anybody, and we go all over. Uh, people are envious of our facilities, our fields, in and out, whether it's auditoriums, all-purpose rooms, and certainly uh, uh, auditoriums and fields and stadiums, we got the best condition of some of our older schools are what we meet about, what we meet constantly about. We have two schools under construction now, Woodbridge Middle School and uh, Ross Street School 11. Those are the two schools uh, that need the attention uh, of the board. We've, we've dedicated a tremendous amount of resources and time um, and decision making. Uh, every day there is an issue to be addressed, a challenge to overcome, and an opportunity to take advantage of. Uh, so I think, um, again, what's on our plate more than other items right now is condition of our schools, making sure these projects come in on time, on budget, and uh, make sure we have great learning environments for our students and staff. That's my number one priority, along with a whole host of others, but I only have two minutes. Uh, but the condition of our schools is, is really what's on my mind right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bourdain. What is a priority, I'm sorry, what is a priority issue that you would like to see given immediate attention and why? Uh, thank you, Mr. Lawman. Um, I think for, for me and my background, uh, spreading special education services uh, more evenly throughout the district, I think is a priority. Um, I really feel like updating our curriculum to fit the need of different learners um, is, should be on the forefront. I've, I've learned a little bit over the last few months about how, how to incorporate that. Um, and plan for tomorrow's jobs. You have to plan for the jobs that you don't even know are available yet. And you know, finding a way to do that, get our kids out in the community and uh, see what they're interested in. Thank you very much. And Mr. Maris, uh, what is a priority issue that you would like to see given immediate attention and why? Thank you, appreciate the question. Uh, very much uh, listening to the panel, I, I concur with them. As a matter of fact, I have been coming to these school board meetings at least for eight years, and one of my priorities at most of these sessions that I have attended was the condition of our schools. Um, one of my dearest friends, um, my former fiance, as a matter of fact, has taught in the school district for 39 years. I heard all types of stories, a lot of very good things and a lot of horror stories about the conditions of those schools. Today, I still hear about the conditions of those schools. People talking about the filth. I've watched the janitorial service shift in the Board of Education over to one main street. The exponential increases in what that cost us as we pay Woodbridge Township to come in and clean our schools, and they're filthy. They're dirty. We have mold and mildew problems, and that's been going on. And they weren't even a low bidder at the time they took it away from our janitorial services here in the school. The same thing that happened with what we used to call the moms in the kitchen. They're gone, replaced by an outside contractor. 
I don't want to see those types of things. I want to see that home environment because that to me helps promote kids to feel they are a part of something. And when they feel they're a part of something, you're going to see a decrease in drug abuse, bullying, and a big improvement in education. So that's one of my top priorities. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on to question three. Mr. Tamborello, if you would uh, please do the honors of starting us off. Question three reads, how would you increase homeschool communication and interaction, especially with families that have no internet access or do not speak English as their first language? Thank you, Mr. Lama. Thank you for the question. Uh, the whole board was concerned about communication and how can, how can we expand it or reach more people. Um, certainly, our, our website is a great tool for families, but more importantly than that, not some machine that you have to log into, but we wanted our administrators out in public, in front of people. We want notes taken. We want feedback given to us. Uh, so last year, as a board, we required uh, our administrators, Dr. Zega uh, and his staff, to go out into the schools, to publicize that they will be there for coffee hours, very informal um, question and answer periods. Uh, so I, I think we were proactive in that. It was something that we required our administrators to do. We thought it was very effective, again, getting that feedback. Maybe a board member or two would join in, uh, usually a mid-morning. And again, he was throughout the district. It was a, an important tool that he utilized to develop some of the policies that, we're gonna, that we've seen and that we will see is those, those little coffee clatches, uh, so to speak, um, along with the uh, uh, administrator's uh, newsletter that's gone out. Uh, we're, we're expanding our opportunities to communicate all the time. Our, our newsletters go out in several, many, many different languages. We have many different languages of uh, staff folks here in the district that we utilize because we know we have a very diverse population. But we want our people out in the street because we are, quite frankly. We are everywhere. We are seen everywhere. We want our administrators. And we, we mandated that last year. And uh, so you did see Dr. Zega at a lot of coffees and a lot of evening uh, roundtables. We're going to continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bourdain, how would you increase homeschool communication and interaction, especially with families that have no internet access or do not speak English as their first language? Um, well, I feel like uh, you know, email is still a good source of communication. We do have a database of all the emails in the district. and. For those who, are, who do have access, it is a, a great tool. We're working on trying to figure out how to, how to get those, that access to everybody. Um, but, but to break it down to targeted uh, email, emails uh, for specific groups, the groups that you're trying to reach, high school, middle school, elementary school, um, special needs, whatever that is, and make sure that those emails are getting and reaching uh, the, pup, the students and the parents. Um, parent nights are, are a big thing. I feel like Parents coming out to learn about what's available in the school district, such as tech nights that they're having now for the high school. I think they just had their high, the high school one, the elementary and the middle school tech nights are coming up to specifically target what is available, uh, like Google Classroom, and how the parents can get involved with learning how the Google Classroom is being used. I am te technically inclined, but I have no idea how Google Classroom is being incorporated. and. That was one of the things that I, I'm trying to uh, address and get out there and learn. Um, you know, just you know, good old-fashioned flyers are going to have to go home for those who don't have that uh, that luxury of having uh, email at home. I feel like parents are able to you know, get those flyers, read them, and interact. We just have to get the parents more involved. That's something that we struggle with. It's something that we are, are trying to work on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Maris, how would you increase homeschool communication and, inter and interaction, especially with families that have no internet access or do not speak English as their first language? Yeah, again, thank you for the question. Um, again, I, I would draw upon my international experience as somebody that's gone overseas, and not just visiting, but lived there in Japan, worked in China, lived in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Dubai, Europe, France, um, England, um, matter of fact, I, I joke, my first foreign assignment was Houston, Texas. Um, but seriously, what I would do is, is go to the parents. Uh, if they're not coming to us, go to them. And what I mean by that is 
there are various organizations, there are various leaders throughout the, the community, particularly our big Indo-American community. And I had the proud privilege of having two of them as, uh, who are prominent in their community as running mates a while back. I would simply reach out to them and say, how do we get to you? How do we come to your venues if you can't come to ours? Because when you show up and you do that, they know that you're sincere, that you know that you care enough to be there, and you're going to get that feel from that community or that section of our community. And it is our community. Our, we are one big melting pot, and I think we need to use that to our advantage. So that's how I would go out to them. And I would ask them, what more can we do to get you involved so that your kids get a better education and we save you tax dollars? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris. How would you increase homeschool communication and interaction, especially with families that have no internet access or do not speak English as their first language? Thank you, Mr. Lottman. I uh, just want to, I'm batting Clayton up here, so I'll make sure we get everything that we're already doing. Uh, when, when you go on our website, we have Google Translate up in the upper left-hand corner, and you can translate the website into any language you're looking for. Uh, in terms of going out into, well, you know what, hold on, let me finish up. Uh, school messenger, you could get a text, a phone call, or an email from the school district. Uh, we also have uh, our Twitter and Facebook page. Facebook page almost went away. Uh, I teamed up with President Trebowasser to make sure that the Facebook page, Facebook changed some of the rules that Mr. Masbury kept it for us. Uh, additionally, we have the Colonial Corner article. Each year for the past six years, I've collaborated with the school president on a annual, excuse me, a monthly newspaper column. Uh, to make sure our message gets out. Uh, this past year, President Trebosser and I, we teamed up uh, with the township, with the mayor, and John Haggerty, our director of communications at the township, on their weekly e-news blast. Uh, at the very bottom there, they have school news. That is a new feature that PTOs have an opportunity to submit information. We have our president's council who gets out into the community for different forums. Uh, as uh, Mr. Tamborello brought up, the superintendent has a newsletter. Uh, and finally, some, some more specific initiatives. Uh, Councilwoman Lizbeth DeJesus and I have teamed up uh, along with the school board and different principals for the annual Caseby block party where we are going into the hard to reach Caseby community that's predominantly Spanish speaking. Uh, school 11, the principal there, she goes to Buns Lane, the Woodbridge Housing Authority public housing where she actually meets with the parents. And last year, Mr. Trebosser, Akshar Sedana, uh, went to the IBA, that's the Islam Business Association, uh, drug night. It was, it was a night to educate Indian parents, uh, South Asian parents, on uh, the, the issue of drugs in the community. So I think we're doing some really great things. I have some other things on my list I didn't even get to. I have the end sign up in front of me. So I think we're doing some good stuff on communication. Thank you very much. All right, Ms. Bourdain, your turn to go first. Question number four reads, if elected, which board committee would you prefer to sit on and why? Oh, that's a pretty easy one. If I'm elected, I would like to remain uh, chair of the Special Education Committee. I found it very uh, valuable to sit in on those meetings um, and have a candid conversation with the Director of Special Services, with the President of the, the board and the superintendent. Um, I would like to remain on the Curriculum Committee because I have also found that very informative and valuable, uh, having great conversation, um, seeing my ideas come to fruition through the curriculum committee has been, I don't know, I can't even describe that, the, the feeling of somebody who's new to, to find that their input is valuable in that regard. Those are the two top two uh, committees I would like to be on. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Maris. If elected, which board committee would you prefer to sit on and why? Most likely it would be the finance committee because I'm a firm believer in follow the money and it'll lead you to a wealth of information. Next would be in communications. Uh, again, I just got done telling you why and how I would approach going out to the community to get parents more involved, uh, to let them know that we are there for them and we're there for their children. Those would be my two main ones, but I, I won't limit myself to that. I would stand ready to work with any group, uh, any committee, where I felt and they felt I could assist them in trying to achieve what we all want, better school system. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Harris, if elected, which board committee would you prefer to sit on and why? 
Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lottman. Uh, I think I've been fortunate enough at all six years of my, uh, my service on the board, I've been on the Policy and Planning Committee. So if re-elected, I would love to continue to serve on that committee. Uh, for the past nine years, I've been working, excuse me, 10 years now, I've been working for the New Jersey State Legislature. I, I help my boss write laws. Uh, that committee is responsible for the policies that govern this district, as well as the regulations uh, that govern our district. That's really the meat on the, the bones of the policies. Uh, that's where tremendous amount of uh, power and influence comes from. We are responsible for the, uh, the proper management of this district, and it's our, our guiding policies and regulations that help guide us and uh, steer our district in the right direction. We also do some other planning type uh, initiatives, such as the annual calendar, which uh, is far trickier than, uh, than meets the eye, as well as looking ahead. Uh, our school district has been around since at least 1876, uh, and I project us to be around another 50, 100, 150 years. We can't look to just tomorrow. We've got to look at the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So we are spending efficiently. Uh, we. Uh, in, in, in closing, I look like I have about 25 seconds left. We worked on a strategic plan uh, four or five years ago now, and slowly but surely, we're implementing many of those different ideas, uh, including but not limited to full day kindergarten. So uh, it's, uh, it's been a blast being on the Policy and Planning Committee, and I hope to continue. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Tamburello, if elected, which board committee would you prefer to sit on and why? Thank you, Mr. Lobman. Well, we're in the business of education, so first and foremost, I would like to continue my work on the curriculum committee. Um, in that specific area, uh, I was proud to have implemented uh, engineering in the high schools at, uh, uh, with a partnership for Project Lead the Way. Uh, we brought engineering in the high schools at Colonia. We have drafting now, I'm proud to say, at, uh, at JFK High School. Uh, we have, over the past several years, encouraged our teachers to bring us ideas. We've expanded our offerings, we've expanded our electives, we got some really innovative class offerings that from middle school through high school that um, are creative, are certainly uh, of value to a, to, to a student in the general um, embedded curriculum that we have, and that's a result of our meetings, our, our curriculum meetings. Again, that encouragement for teachers to bring us new opportunities and we're gonna implement them, um, and I'd like to see the expansion of our engineering uh, program in the high schools and also our partnerships with universities uh, have come out of that curriculum committee and discussions with our uh, assistant superintendent, Mr. Bader. We have, we're proud to say we have partnerships with Monmouth University, uh, NJIT, like I said, certainly Syracuse has a big footprint here in our campus of Woodbridge High School. Um, so we, we had a great impact uh, in recent years in that curriculum committee. I want to continue to do so. Um, and that's where I would like to spend a lot of my time in the, in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to question five. And Mr. Maris, moving back to you to answer first. Question five reads, safety and security are of the utmost importance for our students and staff. What will you do to enhance our current security measures? It's a very interesting question, not one that you can really do justice to in a minute and a half, but I'll, I'll try it as best I can. Um, obviously, we're all very concerned. We know what's going on in our nation, and we are horrified by what has been happening. Uh, I think a lot of that will happen with uh, education. We've got to make the students more aware of their surroundings and be willing to step up and talk about what's happening. Um, bypass the bullies. Identify them. Remove them. No tolerance for bullying, no tolerance for drugs. Uh, that is a, a huge danger to our schools. Also, I want to make sure that the personnel we are hiring and employing and paying are doing the jobs uh, that they should be doing, that they're there full time. Again, I pointed out before that we had somebody running the um, buildings and maintenance uh, supervisor who was not qualified. I didn't say he was a bad man. I'm not saying he was a bad man. He never had the credentials. This board knew it. They sat till the end when he was removed for whatever reason he was removed. And there are probably many other instances that I could cite, but I'm not going to do that this evening uh, out of respect for other people and families that I don't want to bring that up, but I will at another point in time. 
again, I would go back in working with the community to tell them we are working, but you have to help us too. I want those mothers and fathers to come to us and say, my child's got a problem. I don't care if it's drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be. I want them to identify that child and know when they do, that child is going to be treated properly, fairly, and will be taken care of to make sure that they get an education. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris. <clears throat> Safety and security are of the utmost importance for our students and staff. What will you do to enhance our current security measures? Thank you, Mr. Lottman. Uh, first, I'd first like to recognize Councilman Small in the audience, who also serves uh, after 20 years of distinguished service uh, in the Warbridge Police Department, serving the Port Reading Fire Department and the first, uh, excuse me, Port Reading First Aid Squad. Uh, he is our Director of Safety and Security. He has been the utmost advocate uh, for our students on that measure. Uh, sometimes so frustratingly so, uh, I, you know, I, I want to rein him in, but, uh, you know, he, he'll tell me, Dan, we've, we've got to do this. Our student safety comes first, and, and he is absolutely right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a couple things. We spend over $300,000 annually on school security personnel. Uh, those are Woodbridge police officers. Those are class one police officers uh, who are armed and uh, you know, traveling around our schools, checking our doors all day, every day, providing a presence. Additionally, we have installed new hardware, some measures that some measures I prefer not to, uh, not to repeat and share with the audience, uh, but one of the most uh, obvious is uh, over 300 cameras we have constantly monitoring our schools. Uh, years ago in the 2000s, we replaced our doors, uh, new, new locks as well. And we're constantly doing training regarding active shooter, fire drills, things of that nature. Uh, so I'd like to, one, continue uh, spending that kind of money and those resources protecting our students. Uh, and then finally, uh, as Mr. Maris had brought up uh, mental health slightly. Uh, I wanted, Mr. T uh, Tamarell and I partnered up, uh, I think a budget ago, on two additional student assistance counselors. Those are individuals who work with our our students on mental health type issues. Uh, we now have five of them, that's uh, up from, from three, so we're very pleased at their, uh, their progress so far in year two. So uh, mental health is very important in the equation. Sorry, Diane, I was pushing the envelope there. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tamborello, safety and security are of the utmost importance for our students and staff. What will you do to enhance our current security measures? It's another topic that's on all of our minds all of the time. Um, I was honored or, or proud to have implemented the first safety and security committee my, my first year as board president several years ago. It was after the tragedy of Sandy Hook in, in November when I, I took over as board president in January and with the unanimous support of the boards that we have to get that committee, an, a, a dedicated committee for safety and security. We implemented that then. We, we, and since then, we are a state leader in safety and security in our buildings. Not only Mr. Small, but his staff wake up every morning, go to bed every night, thinking about how can we get our schools or make our schools safer. We, we are we're lucky to have the staff that we do have. We were going to continue uh, to provide security. The problem with talking about the good things we're doing, it, it kind of compromises the, the very security that we're trying to implement. So the, the, the public knows that we, we, we dedicated a tremendous amount of resources and manpower to security. We're going to continue working with local law enforcement, as Mr. Harris said. We have a tremendous relationship, and our, our, our roving patrols are Woodbridge uh, police officers. Um, certainly keeping our doors locked is a little thing that we got to change the culture on and making sure our doors are locked. The, the new wave of security now is vestibules and, and creating safer layouts more practical layouts. Uh, we, we're starting to implement some new things, uh, but I'm proud to say we, we are an area or state leader in safety and security. We're going to continue to be that, and we're going to continue to provide the resources needed to keep our facilities safe. There's, there's no other way that we can discuss that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bourdain, safety and security are of the utmost importance for our students and staff. What will you do to enhance our current security measures? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, from what I have experienced thus far, I, I've seen that we have the some of the top security measures uh, in the state. Um, we have police at the schools. Almost every time I'm at my daughter's school, there is a police officer there. They're roving, but they're there. And I feel very secure sending my daughter to school there every day. I know that the doors are locked. I know that I have to show ID to, sh to get into the building. Uh, they've implemented um, the cooler policy where if your child forgets their lunch, the lunch goes in the cooler. You don't come inside the building. The door doesn't open. It's a really great uh, 
you know, you don't get to see your kid, but you, know, you get to leave their lunch. Um, they leave their flute, they leave their homework. There's a cart outside, you put the, their stuff on the cart. There's less door opening, less opportunity um, for anything to happen. Um, you know, just uh, what, everything they said also, like you, don't, you definitely don't wanna give away all your, all your secrets. <laughs> um, the door locks, the, the, all the doors are locked inside. The, the, the teachers know what they're doing. The security drills. Um, the thing I would like to see, and I don't know how you would do this, is how to not make it scary for the kids. I know that over the years my daughter's become accustomed to the lockdowns and, and the security drills, um, but when they're little, they're, it's, it can be scary and it be, can be anxiety ridden and, and I'd love to see somehow um, some methodology to be able to make it not quite as scary for them. But I do feel secure in sending my daughter to school every day. There's nothing I would truly change at this point that I'm aware of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to question six. Uh, Mr. Harris, if you would please go first. What new academic program would you like to see offered to our students? All right, uh, that's a great question. Uh, so the, the key term these days is STEAM, uh, science, technology, engineering, art, uh, excuse me, arts and mathematics. Uh, currently, we only offer engineering at one of our three high schools. Uh, so project number one would be adding uh, three sections of engineering to John F. Kennedy Memorial High School and Woodbridge High School. Uh, the trick there is finding a staff member qualified to teach uh, engineering, which is not exactly easy. I know we have some legislation floating around in Trenton, so I'll... Uh, I'll lean on uh, Speaker Coughlin and get that going. Uh, I think you need engineering at Woodbridge High, what do you think? Yes, we do, yes, sir. All right, <laughs> so we're gonna work on engineering uh, and try to find a new faculty member for next year, or excuse me, two faculty members to begin teaching that. Engineering is important. Annually, 100,000 engineers in the United States of America retire. 36,000 graduate college every year. That balance is made up uh, foreign, uh, from foreign workers, from India and from China. Uh, with all due respect to those workers, I prefer American workers to work as our engineers. So we need to produce more engineers in our high school so we can produce more engineers as college graduates in our country. So thank you, uh, engineering. Rah, rah. Thank you, Mr. Harris. And if you're, for whatever, for whatever reason, if you're only able to find one candidate, send him or her over to Woodbridge High School, please. Sure. All right. You got it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tamborello, what new academic program would you like to see offered to our students? I'm afraid I'm going to have to piggyback on Mr. Harris's. I already spoke about my, uh, my passion for the curriculum committee and the good things that we've done there already. Certainly engineering, science, and technology. We want to expand course offerings and, again, get, get more creative. Uh, for instance, we have forensics now, which is a very popular course in the schools. Um, courses like that, and again, I'm rehashing one of my, my, one of my other answers, uh, but they're brought to us from our staff members. So we, we encourage that input. Uh, we encourage them to bring us ideas, and it's ideas that, that like that that we're going to implement. But uh, I hate to say I'm going to copy Mr. Harris's uh, answer, but I think we, we will expand engineering in the very near future. Uh, I think it's important. And uh, not only uh, uh, the general engineering technology, but I'd like to be even more specific and gear it toward uh, an electrical or a chemical curriculum as well as we as we really get into into the weeds with the with engineering expansion, uh, more specific uh, disciplines, and certainly overall, I think that will be a very uh, positive addition to our high schools expanding en engineering, and it will happen in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bourdain. What new academic program would you like to see offered to our students? Thank you. Um, you know, obviously what they said. Um, but I believe in STEAM. I believe in, um, it's a different way to teach our children, especially through the arts. I, again, have been fortunate to see some uh, curriculum uh, to help teach different learners. And def I would love to see an academic program available to different learners, um, more through the visual arts and music. That's me. Thank you. Thank you. Right, moving on to the next question. Mr. Tamborello, if you would please go first. If elected, what are three goals that you, you would like to achieve during your term? Um, may have touched on this as well, but I want to see the safe and successful completion of our school's construction. 
Uh, there's two buildings right there, right off the bat, uh, Woodbridge Middle and uh, Raw Street School 11. I'd be, uh, I mean, it would be a, a thrill for me to be on this board and to see those projects through the completion. Uh, those are the two goals that uh, I, I focus a lot of my time on. Um, also, the condition of our older schools, certainly School 18 to complete the re re remediation there. Um, school 14 issues, School 25 needs an expansion. Um, these are all issues that, uh, goals that I want to try to implement. Um, we also want to see, I mean, there's big picture items like that. There's other things as far as air conditioning in our schools. I want to see that. I want to see more of that. We've worked tremendous, we've had tremendous progress putting air conditioning in our schools as a result of parent feedback and our warmer Junes and certainly Mays and even our, our warmer Septembers. Um, that is a, a, a thing that the public wants to see, and we've been working on that. We've been really making some great progress. Um, issues like new transportation facility. We got a great transportation department. We got a great leader down there. He's got some great drivers and, and, and aides and technicians down there. Um, we need a new facility there. There's a million things to work on. That's why we're here tonight, and that's why we hope to be here three years from now doing this all over again. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bourdain, if elected, what are three goals that you would like to achieve during your term? Thank you, Mr. Lotman. Um, like Ezio said, there are a million goals. Uh, to narrow it down to three is a little, a little difficult, but I have also touched on some of these. Um, different learners teaching through arts and music, um, you know, graduating all of our students, somehow finding a way to graduate all of our students, not letting, not failing the, you know, them, but seeing how they learn, seeing what, what unlocks uh, each individual student, uh, making sure they have a plan for after high school, whether it's college or a vocation um, or the, one of the armed services, making sure that they have a plan, making sure that every child is treated as an individual. Um, those are basically the top three. Thank you. Thank you very much. I inadvertently neglected to ask Mr. Maris the previous question, so I'm going to rewind and have Mr. Maris answer that question and the one I just asked. So again, I apologize, Mr. Maris, for that. So going back, the question before was, what new <laughs> academic program would you like to see offered to our students? Well, if I will, I'm going to echo the opinion of the, uh, the candidates here this evening. Engineering, absolutely. It is a crying need, and as someone who has spent 30 years of his life in international engineering and construction with Foster Wheeler, Brown and Root, and a host of other companies that I've worked with around the world, I can tell you there is a crying need for engineers. There will continue to be a crying need for engineers. And we do have to train people. And yes, they're going to come from foreign shores and come here to be trained, and many of them are going to stay. But that's what is America is all about. We are a melting pot. And we need to teach all of the children coming into our community, at least give them the opportunity to pursue an engineering degree. Well, along with that, I will also agree with liberal arts. I think arts is absolutely paramount. As someone who was the former uh, director of visual arts for the Edison Art Society, I tried promoting years, four years, of enhancing arts. And as a matter of fact, I did work with members of the Woodbridge Township uh, Art Society to get theirs off the ground at the time when ours was running very strong. I would also add the third, and that's business. And I mean how to run a small business. I think it's key, because not everybody's going to want to stay with some big corporation if they're lucky enough to even get in. They may want to go off on their own, and I think that is very key. Maybe they want to be a, a pipe fitter, a plumber, an electrician, but getting a business background is going to help them succeed when they do that. And they become good citizens, and they also create a lot of jobs, and they have job security. Thank you. Thank you. And going back, still stay with you. Uh, question seven. Again, I apologize for, for missing you on that other one. This question reads, if elected, what are three goals that you would like to achieve during your term? Well, first and foremost, and I mean this in all sincerity, is make the voters that put me in that position proud that they did. And I will work diligently to fulfill that faith in me. Um, Yes, I, I want to see improvements. I want to see expansions, things that I've been talking about, not just talking about, working actively to promote within this community for at least the last 12 years that I've been back here living in this area, because I did move around the world. And I've been back in Woodbridge Township for almost 18 years now, and 12 of it very much dedicated to working with 
the schools. I, I come to meetings regularly. I challenge, as people well know. But I also praise. And I've seen a lot of good things in this community. And there's a lot more to, that can and will be done. And I want to be a part of that. I will hope they'll give me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Harris, please finish up this question. If elected, what are three goals that you would like to achieve during your term? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lottman. Uh, three things. Uh, plan for the future. Uh, the future of School 4 and 5, the, school, the future of School 14, and the future of School 18. Uh, they remain our three schools uh, in terms of age that are unaddressed. Uh, so we need to take a look at those, uh, whether replacing them, expanding them, or simply modernizing them. Uh, just by sheer age, they are just not up to par, and we need to bring them up to par a little bit further. Uh, secondly, engaging all stakeholders. I move about the, the township regularly. We need to continue to, to effectively communicate, whether that's going to Caseby for a block party or going to Buns Lane to engage uh, those who, who live on that street uh, or visiting open houses, things of that nature. Uh, it's been brought up on this dais a couple times now about going into the community. I think we need to continue to do that as well as uh, effectively communicate with those same stakeholders. Uh, lastly, we need to continue ways to squeeze every cent out of our budget. Uh, that begins with critiquing, uh, critiquing spending. Uh, our chair of the Finance Committee, that's Sue Tamborello, he is the, I, I call him the king at this, he critiques everything. Uh, monthly, we critique all the bills that the Buildings and Grounds Committee uh, spends money on. We replaced our auditor a couple of years ago. That was something I was passionate about. To having an auditor for about 17 years, I thought he was getting a little lazy. We replaced him. I think our, I, I like our new auditor. He finds a lot of money for us. Uh, we need to continue to, to negotiate fair contracts. Uh, we need to keep up with our partnership with the township. Uh, Mr. Trebwasser, Mr. Delapicho, our president and vice president, as well as myself, we continue to regularly meet with the mayor, the administration, to kick around different ideas on how we could uh, partner and share services. Uh, so I think that uh, that does it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, this time I'd like for you, for you all to prepare your uh, closing statement, and since Ms. Ms. Bourdain, you, it's your turn to go first, I'd ask you to go first, followed by Mr. Maris, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Tamborella will end the evening. And while talking about in your closing statement, will you please make mention of the number and letter on your ballot, because the process did change a little bit this year. So Ms. Bourdain, if you would please provide your closing statement. Thank you, Mr. Lottman. Uh, in, the past six, excuse me, in the past six months, I've had the honor of being a board member. I've learned a lot. I've had conversations with teachers and administrators, with parents and students. I have brought ideas, suggestions, and concerns to the board and administration. I had a teacher or two thank me. I've had a teacher or two happily work over the summer. It made me feel good. I would love to continue down this path. Ideally, we'd all like to leave this, leave this life leaving an impact, creating positive change, and helping our fellow humans. It turns out, for me, being a board member may be my impact. I would love to have the opportunity to help shape the way our children learn. I just heard a quote today, and it loosely reads, our, our world will change when our children are educated. Being elected to the board, to, to the Woodbridge Township School Board, will be my way of helping change the world. I would like you to vote column K. I am 3K on November 6th, and I thank you again to the President's Council and Mr. Lottman. Thank you. Mr. Maris, if you would please provide your closing statement. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the other candidates that are here tonight. I found their commentary uh, very insightful, um, and I commend them for the, the job that they've been trying to do over the years that they have been um, in the positions that they currently hold. Uh, Again, I look at the end result, and I've been watching what's been going on with the school system. And just to point out something, here's New Jersey Magazine, right? R rates the top 100 schools. This is September. I dare anybody to find Woodbridge Township in here. Why aren't we there? Uh, these are the types of things that worry me. I see this, the flyers that go out. Thousands of dollars are spent on this. Why? I'm one candidate against three, but I'm breaking in or trying to break into the team. Break the click, as I said earlier. And look who's behind it all. Again, I don't want a monolithic form of government. I want this board to be independent, but work with any other entity of government that we need to, whether it be on a local level, state level, or federal level, because that's key. 
that's key to securing the future for our kids and keeping our taxes down and our schools up to par. And I think that's critical. Most people don't know how many new apartments are coming into this community. Right down on Main Street, Green Street in that area, you're going to have almost 400 new apartments very shortly. That is going to really throw a monkey wrench into the school system. Add in Buns Lane, add in the other areas where you have thousands of apartments, 355 over at Ronson. Guess what? Tax abatement. Tax abatements to the ones down on Green Street, Rollway Avenue. Again, 232 units there. 145 proposed, they're going to tear down the senior building over there on uh, Brook Street at 55 Brook. 145 apartments going in there. Think of the impact that's going to have on our community. Those are the kinds of things I want you to be aware of. Those are the kinds of things I'm going to challenge to make sure that our kids and our school and our taxes come first. Thank you. Oh, by the way, just quickly, I am the only candidate on Line J. They changed the whole format this year. So the McCormick team has column K, Tom Maris on J. So if you want to cast one vote, please cast just one. Or if you'd like to pick two from the McCormick team, please do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Harris, if you'd please provide your closing statement. Sure. I, uh, I had a prepared statement, but uh, the gloves have come off. Um, I am a proud supporter of Mayor McCormick. He uh, consistently is a proud supporter of our schools. He has pumped in, along with the town council, $26 million uh, from those pilot programs, bringing in new development into our schools. That's new tracks, basketball courts, tennis courts, air conditioning in our auditoriums, new seating, new lighting, new stages, uh, new turf fields, uh, which also helps bringing, bring in out-of-town revenue. Uh, very proud to partner with him on that, as well as when I was president, we teamed up on the 2017 March referendum, which was 58 or $59 million, which we partnered to get some state funding. That money, well, that bonding that the school district did, all of that, all, the, all that borrowing that we did, the township's paying with those new pilot agreements that uh, Mayor McCormick and the town council are bringing to this township. That's power plants, that's warehouses, things that don't create students at our schools. The development that is taking place that Mr. Marish referenced uh, is designated in smart growth areas, such as transit villages, which historically provide a minimal amount of kids. They, produce, they do provide students that is why we are building a new School 11 in downtown Woodbridge, which will be larger than the current size school uh, to accommodate those, those students, as well as Woodbridge Middle School. Those schools are being built and or renovated prior to the construction commencing. You know, more students I don't see necessarily as a problem. We do get some additional students, but as Mr. Tamarello and I have always maintained, you send us students, we'll educate them. Uh, getting back to my, my closing statement, well, I also do want to address one other thing. Uh, filthy, moldy, mildew schools, that simply is not the case at all. Uh, Mr. Maris, uh, you had five minutes the other day at our most recent meeting and you did not identify a single school that has those problems. So if you want to point those out on behalf of our students, we welcome them. I'll stay here until you provide me the names of those schools that are filthy and moldy and mildew. Uh, my name is Daniel Harris and I am uh, 1K, running with my running mates, Ezio Tamarello, 2K, Sue Bordan, 3K. We look forward to continuing to serve you. Thank you very much for a terrific evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Tamarello, if you'd please provide your closing statement. Thank you, Mr. Lobman. You know, we come here once a month to do the public's business on the uh, third Thursday of every month. And I, I've, n I've been doing this for nine years. I've never heard so many falsehoods and misrepresentations in one night than I did from down at the end of the table with this gentleman that's running against us. Um, from what Mr. Harris said about, he thinks uh, having a six and a half million dollar contract for custodian work in 2009 and 10, and paying that same amount eight years later, that's an exponential increase in the custodial contract. We're getting tremendous value for our money. Our neighboring districts, if you ever went, ventured out of your little circle of friends, our neighboring districts are paying so much more in a smaller footprint that you have no idea the numbers that you're talking about. That's one falsehood. You mentioned you wanted to be on the communication committee. I'm here nine years. You let me know where that communication committee is because we do not have a communication committee. You also mentioned how you've been working with the schools for the past 25 years. I'd love to see any example of you being part of the solution. 
you continue to criticize, you continue to complain, you continue to bash the mayor, our brothers and sisters on the town council, and certainly the board. There's been so many misrepresentations, I urge the public to just reach out to this gentleman, ask him to elaborate on these questions. Certainly you can reach out to us and we can provide our track record of progress, improvement, moving this district forward. We're going to continue to do that. Now I'll go to my prepared statements. Certainly I want to thank everyone for participating in this event and for all those people watching at home. Dan, Sue, and I have a proud track record of accomplishments for our schools and our community. We've proven that we can work with the public sector and with the private sector and across many diversified groups for a common goal. And that goal is to make sure our schools are the best they can be. We have delivered on tax relief, world-class curriculum, opportunities for students entering the workforce, innovation in special education, and the best safety and security in the state, partnering with dual enrollments with, with colleges and universities, and a whole host of other items. We are always guided by the principle that our decisions must make academic and economic sense. But elections are about the future, ladies and gentlemen, and we are running for re-election to continue moving this district forward. We want to see our digital curriculum expanded. We need to ensure that our school's construction is done on time and on budget. We need to uh, complete these air conditioning products that I spoke about, projects that I spoke about earlier. We want to make sure our curriculum meets the demands of a 21st century society, and we will do that. It's not enough just to show up at one or two meetings a year and try to score some cheap political points to try to get elected. That's not public service. That's actually a disservice. That's not who we are. That's not who we'll never be. On the contrary, Dan, Sue, and I have a proven track record and a tireless, tireless work ethic to get things done. Once again, I thank you all for your support today, in the future, and certainly in the past. We will continue to earn your vote. On November 6th, I ask you to vote column K, 1K for Dan Harris, 2K for Ezio Tamburello, 3K for Sue Bourdain, because we cannot afford to move this district backwards. Thank you all for your time. All right, thank you candidates uh, for a great evening. Thank you for your uh, insightful answers. I'd like to also thank everyone in attendance for being here tonight. And of course, I'd like to thank our president's count. I'm sorry? This where Dan went. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to thank you guys and you're yelling at me, I'm kidding. But uh, I'd like to thank the president's council, you know, for uh, I think it's 12 years now, you've been, I've been lucky enough for, to, to be asked to moderate this. And every year I ask, man, how lucky to, how, what I do to get to be so lucky to be up here. So thank you, ladies, for that. And for everyone who's watching, please do not forget, uh, November 6th is a Tuesday. Uh, it's a huge day. Please go out, vote. And when you do go vote, please bring a non-perishable food item as uh, we are doing a cast a can program where every uh, item of food collected will go to the We Feed Woodbridge program and fill up our pantries. But again, November 6th, Tuesday, November 6th, I'm sorry, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., our polling polls will be open. And uh, please, our kids need you. Get out and vote. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night.